1159 at Radio Free America. And this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans. Another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> And welcome everybody to our daily gun show. Come to you live every weeknight at midnight Eastern, and we talk about guns for an hour. The goal of the show has changed over the years. We're coming up on episode number seven hundred. Uh, kind of went through and resorted the shows, adjusting for all the dates we missed on the road, and um, uh, we're at like six hundred seventy something, I think. So. Uh, we're coming up on episode 700, so the show has changed over the years, late years, literally. And uh, lately, we've been uh, holding true to the concept of featuring a gun shop every day. That's one of the goals we've had since the beginning. We feature a member over on gun channels or a person who's active in the Second Amendment community. That's one of our goals is to shine light on people that are putting out interesting effort. And then uh, other things that we put out on like a weekly basis. We have themes to the shows each day. But basically, the uh, other kind of goal of the show is to not be led by the agenda-based media that's uh, disseminating information and deciding what people are going to talk about. So there's plenty of shows out there that talk about news of the day. We try to be a difference from that, so an alternative from that. And uh, lately, it's been a panel show, so we've got a bunch of people joining us that are members over on GunChannels.com. GunChannels.com is a community we built five years ago. It's uh, thousands of people, hundreds of people use it every day. Dozens of people are active participants in the creation of content, uh, produced shows, uh, produced content, uh, reviews and podcasts, uh, art, photographs. Um, we don't have enough bloggers, but they're always welcome. And then, of course, live stuff like you're experiencing right now. And uh, one of my favorite things to do with this live stuff, even though it's produced right now by Google or YouTube, is the uh, interactive feature of this this broadcast so unlike a radio show that's just crammed on the internet or some sort of television show where you're just getting information disseminated to you uh, this is all about the interactivity so when we uh, simulcast the shows over on gun channels we're watching the comments from the people over there and occasionally we watch the comments from youtube as well <clears throat> so again we've got a lot of people joining us tonight thanks for the people that show up to uh, be part of the conversation and especially the people that are in the room. If you want to be part of the room, uh, just go jump over to Gun Channels and ask for a link. Got the hiccups. Uh, Clover, jumping in from Texas. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks for the invite. Especially since you just did your own show, so getting all the prep for that and then running a show. Appreciate double, you. Double around. feature. Double feature. Yeah. Uh, it was a good show, though. We were, you do your nerd show on Thursday. We talk about behind the scenes, or you usually do some sort of a focus on how to do your own content. Tonight we were talking about um, newsletters and getting information out to your people in uh, text ways via email. Super cool. Really liked it. Uh, Dead Horse jumping in from Utah. Thanks for joining. Sound weird. I don't know if you're on the phone, but I know it's your busy time of the year, so I appreciate you jumping in. And uh, you're in your room. you got to get better internet. What's going on? Hey, not a whole lot. Thanks for the invite. Well, no, well, I was talking to him, but yep, there's Gary jumping in from Kansas. Thanks for joining. Got Dano jumping in from Illinois. Glad to be here. Glad right. to know that uh, the nuclear facility that I'm right next to is not currently having a security problem. Okay. <laughs> we got Dog jumping in from Nevada. Thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for having me. <clears throat> and then we got Woods jumping in from the Pacific Northwest. Thanks for the invite, G. You bet. It's always good to have a representation from the Pacific Northwest. And then I'm down here in Tucson, so you see we got people from all over the country. We used to never really do ages, but we're all pretty old, probably. Uh, but a lot of times we'll have a pretty good range of ages in here as well. So uh, lots of different experience levels, and that's what it's all about. So uh, yeah, no worries. So um, so boys, Dano has an idea here. Uh, 
purposes and uses of muzzle devices as a topic. I think that could be interesting, especially tonight. So uh, typically on the show on Mondays, we go behind the scenes and we talk about the nuts and bolts of how to create content. It's important. Uh, the First Amendment is, well, the internet is the electronic version of that First Amendment, right? The reason we have this country and the reason we've got the development we've got is because of patents and the ability to print and the printing press and the interchangeable type and all that. And uh, Ben Franklin and all those founding fathers were all into uh, writing and disseminating information on independent presses versus state presses. So uh, this internet is a version, thanks to Al Gore, of a democratized distribution information, right? So um, anyway, so uh, where do we wanna go? Um, muzzle devices? I guess. Just sure. start out. Go. Where we purposes. Well, I, I guess there's two, there's two different sides to it. At least as I was thinking about it, there's the um, role that it may play in the military, uh, which has similarities to civilian, but it also has its own differences. And then there's the civilian world and the roles that it may play there. Uh, as just an example, uh, if. Um, somebody's into hunting, but they tend to do longer distances and they want the possibility of, or, or greater possibility of a second shot, uh, if it is over a longer distance, I would think, and this is where I'm asking the panel, uh, where a muzzle break would, would, would come in uh, handy or not. That's the question I pose. For hunting, I mean, I guess follow up. Yeah, if you're that, that 800 yard, or further, uh, and, and you want a chance at a second shot um, before that critter moves away if you miss. I don't think it makes uh, a difference. I don't well, think it makes a bit of difference. I mean, for the application you're talking about, I'm not seeing there being that big. I mean, generally speaking, which is muzzle devices, gun stable, so you have less movement idea. So I suppose if you know you were really that worried about that second shot, and maybe if the distance was cl closer, because I think it would have time to get that second shot off. But uh, yeah, I, could, I mean, there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. Shots have to be real quick. Muzzle breaks, uh, muzzle breaks definitely have a place. Yeah, for follow-up shots, I I definitely think the guys that I see shooting long-range precision who don't have to worry about a, a fast follow-up shot, none of those guys are using muzzle brakes on their rifles. Um, it can create uh, it, it can create some issues with that nice clean ejection of the bullet and your crown basically and the dispersion of airflow around the bullet and muzzle brakes can throw off accuracy at long distances and we see it all the time out here. And guys coming out here with right, you know, different caliber, all sorts of different caliber rifles and they can't print worth the crap and they take off their muzzle brake and all of a sudden their you know their groups shrink back up at a thousand yards so yeah, yeah and that's why a lot of, that's why a lot of times when you see when they market a barrel as a long barrel, a lot of times they're not threaded uh, I'm, a lot of times the end of the barrel is almost like laid inward a little bit actually having a threading added to it and that's because the muzzle brake does change the way things act as you get further out. So do, do, does anyone feel that there is a role in the civilian uh, world for a muzzle brake? And if so, what is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I so, mean, we can't, we can't confuse a muzzle brake with a compensator, and a lot of people do that as well. Well, the, the go ahead and, and, and go and define that for us, just so we're all on the same page. Well, I mean, you've got <clears throat> we're talking muzzle devices, right? So you've got flash suppression, you've got sound suppression, and then you've got um, muzzle what rise, I guess, suppression. Three totally different things. Or you could, I guess, you could consider that recoil in a way too. Uh, suppression. So, muzzle. You know, when you're talking muzzle devices, those are sort of the three categories you fall into. 
Yep. I mean, all three of those, I mean, first of all, I don't think there's anybody in this room who wouldn't argue the purposes for civilian use of silencers or suppressors. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'll tell you right now, I wish that uh, I had some on a lot more of my house guns just because I know my hearing's going to get shot, you know, yeah. fire on the half I ever have to again, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. And pretty much all three of those, you know, you can have one device that does all three, right? Um, you can have one device that does just one. You can have one device that does the, any combination thereof. I mean, it's, it's out there. Um, the least uh, of those three types of suppression in the civilian world, I think the flash suppression is probably the least important in the civilian world. Yeah, that seems to make sense. I mean, pretty much, you know, that, and even, even the flash suppression, I have the flash, the silencing, uh, you know, the full, the full gambit on, say, an AR that I have set up for the house. If I can afford it, there's no reason I wouldn't do it. You know, you're not, it's not going to make the gun any worse. Now, uh, there is another type of uh, muzzle device. I hadn't heard it mentioned. I'll just throw it out there. And that's something that it has a couple of different names, but I've heard ref- heard it referred to as a projector, typically on a short-barreled rifle that might tend to create a fireball on the on an inside range and be very loud to push that, that energy and that flame forward rather than to the sides. Why would you want that? What? I don't understand why you'd want that. That's just for playing around. No, I'm just saying it, it, it exists. It's another one. Uh, it, it's it's t- typically to be uh, considerate of other people at an indoor range because they can be, like as an example, uh, AR pistol t- tends to be very loud at an indoor range as opposed to an outdoor range. Well, anyway, so I'm having a break on there, though, on our regular AR. Um, when you're trying to shoot multiple targets, like in a match or just out at a range and you've got multiple targets to shoot at, and you're trying to you know, go from one to the other, having a break on there is massively different. So breaks can make a big difference. And uh, I don't know. I can see why you'd want flash suppression, I guess. But um, the things that create flash suppression also end up being tuning forks, from my experience, so they end up making noise. I don't like them as much. Right. In competition, muzzle brakes are extremely popular. Yeah, brakes make a giant difference. If you get a chance to shoot a gun without nothing, and then with like an A2, just a standard brake, and then like a real brake that's made to do something, a good one, then uh, shoot them, you know, just all three at the range or something, then uh, you can tell a real big difference. There's a lot less jump with a brake, especially yeah. on something like and, and that And that goes back to that whole concept of follow-up shot. I'd certainly love to be able to suppress my shotgun while I'm duck hunting and save my hearing because I'm getting old now. Well, well, is that something that a technology that actually works well enough uh, with a shot type gun? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, they And is that a way to get some of these infringements off of us if we can get, uh, you know, the sporting people behind it too? Well, go over to, I mean, anti-gunners and love to point out other countries. Well, in most of Europe, it's pretty standard shotguns and hunting rifles to be suppressed. In some places, it's actually... So it's a, they're so gun restrictive, yet they encourage people to suppress their fire, firearms. Do you break it up for other people? Yeah. Uh, a touch. A bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, we had the Hearing Suppression Act basically signed. It was ready to go. We had Trump. We had a brand new everything. And then Vegas happened. <clears throat> and now it's more than a year after Vegas, and there's no evidence at all, and there's no call for why there's no evidence coming to light. And now we're having potentially laws changed, or at least uh, the equivalent of laws changed through executive action. 
based on something that we don't even have conclusive evidence of. But anyway, so we almost had your anchor suppression. So uh, the, the four types that we've discussed so far, we talked about the projector type, we've talked about the bird cage type, we've talked about uh, uh, muzzle brake type, we've also talked about, um, what was the other one we talked about? You got brakes, you got... Uh, suppressors. Did I already say that? Flash suppressors, and then you've got sound suppressors. I don't know if you got any. Yeah. You're saying there's like novelty ones or this thing where you shove it down the range? I don't know why you wouldn't consider that for anything except for that specific situation where you're talking about going into an indoor range. That would make your gun all weird. It would be pushing back no, on you. No, there's another use for those is that they can extend your barrel an extra two or three inches, basically, so you can use a longer handguard, which is probably the most common use for those flash cans. And that's what I call them is a flash can. But that's that's the most common use I see is guys putting those on AR pistols and SBRs just so they can use a longer rail on, you know, with their seven inch barrel and they can use a 10 inch rail because that flash can extends it out an extra three inches or three and a half inches. Oh. That's, that's the most common use I see. So that makes no sense. Like I'm going to put a seven inch barrel on this thing, even though I definitely want yeah. 10 inches. Why not change the barrel instead? Well, because then you have this, see, they, they like that inset look to where the gun like ends with the handguard, right? Like they, it's a whole look they're going for. It's not necessarily for, you know, pract, you know, being practical. It's, it's really a look that they're trying to get. That, that's literally the most common use is to get that look. Okay. I want a dissipator. I only want like a seven and a half inch dissipator. And then compensators don't come into play uh, too much on rifles because most rifles are pretty in line with your shoulder. And uh, compensators are more commonly found on handguns, right? And uh, something with a large, you know, overbore access, right? So uh, it's more common, I think, to find, you know, not that muzzle brakes don't have compensators built into them and, and stuff. I see that a lot, but that's mostly just gimmicky shit. It's, you know... Are you referring to anti Uh Anything that uh, limits the um, vertical movement of the rifle is what a compensator is made to do, right? Okay. Whereas okay. the muzzle breaks horizontal movement of the rifle. And uh, so compensators on rifles, like, and most, most muzzle brakes or muzzle devices that I see, like, is everything in one, is usually all gimmicky. They don't do any one thing really good. Like, they, they sacrifice performance to give you all these features and they, they turn out to be more of a gimmick so i tend to try and pick a break that's a real muzzle break that's really focusing on just doing that one job or a break that's just or a flash hider that's just trying to be a flash hider you know i, I tend to go after stuff more than that because they seem to do a better job than these oh this does everything in one it's a muzzle break compensator flash hider it does it all like none of those work very good in my experience well, no, I, I think I agree with you that a specific product for a specific purpose does usually seem to work better. Uh, I mean, you can, in terms of compensators, you can category. And then. I was going to say, so uh, on uh, flash suppressors or, or flash hiders, or uh, um, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the flash suppression is meant so someone else doesn't see the flash from your gun, or do you think it's made so you don't lose your like night blind, your night vision, so it, the flash doesn't blind you, the shooter? What, what what are they really designed to do? You don't get night vision. You shot stuff that flashes. You don't you don't get like your eyes aren't dilated after that. So I would say it's for the person downrange that they don't see your position. Exactly. I've, seen, I've heard a lot of people refer to that it's for you, for your, you know, so you don't lose your night vision and stuff. And I haven't found that to be the case with any muzzle break or anything. Like even the biggest fireball guns I have don't blind me shooting them in, you know, at night. That's people that have images of like a fireball in front of a gun at night. 
you know, and they don't realize that that happens faster than a camera can even hardly take a picture of it. So they think that that's somehow you know, enough to make your eyes change. People also don't take into account that if their odds are, if they're shooting at night, they're good. their eyes are already dilated from adrenaline. It ain't going to make a difference. No, I mean, you'd have to be on for a minute or two before it starts to change, and then it would have to go off real fast. Yep. Which is why when you get up in the middle of the night, you don't want a thousand lumen light on your handgun. Oh, look at this guy. I just had to... You, 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 you <laughs> brought us over there. <laughs> Before you blind yourself looking for somebody else. Or you could just get in the habit of closing one eye like you're supposed to. It's like it ricocheted off the wall and then I just saw this big spots. <laughs> but I digress. All right. Well, that was muzzle devices. Um, best one. Does anybody have? Particular ones they like? A2. Come on. I'm, I'm saying it works. It works great. <laughs> and it's not loud and annoying. The uh, the vice breaks. The, uh, is it V-I-A-S? Yeah. V V A I S. I'm sorry. Vice. Um, I've uh, got one of those on a 300 Win Mag. I've... Um, it's a loudener, more than it is anything. But I will tell you that it does cut the perceived recoil down considerably. People on the range will hate you, but um, yeah, if you've got magnum caliber that kind of beats you around a little bit, yeah, look into a vice break for sure. I wouldn't even think about that. <clears throat> so, so you have a muzzle break on yours, is that right, Clover? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I've got several rifles with those. Yeah, they're they're great. I wasn't even thinking about brakes reducing muzzle uh, or reducing recoil, but that's definitely a factor on the big guns. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, that's that's compensation, you know. It, it really is. It's just kind of in a different direction is all. Mm -hmm. You know, you got, you're talking on a pistol, you're talking muzzle flip, you know, when you're talking a compensator. But on a, um, on a rifle, you know, you've got, you can have a combination of muzzle flip and or recoil. But either way, it's compensating for the motion of the firearm. And I guess a good side note is I never, never did mention, I was thinking rifle the whole time, but I never said the word rifle. Oh, yeah. well, did break it yeah. when you meant rifle. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of any kind of compensation when you start talking about larger guns, uh, especially I actually like compensation or barrel porting to work as compensation on a lot of shotguns. Uh, I don't necessarily want to break because shooting field, you want to be able to side to side, but being able to keep the barrel from rising up past where you want is nice. Dano, you got any? Uh, I actually have a uh, Taurus 44 Magnum that has built-in porting, which it's it's a it's a built-in muzzle device for, but uh, uh, it, it definitely uh, has less muzzle rise than it would have if it did not have that built-in porting. Uh, Dead horse, did you have any? For an actual muzzle break, uh, Strike Industries uh, J Comp, I think it's about the. Uh, best muzzle brake for the money on the market. Um, Daniel even has a link that he'll post on uh, gun channels. Uh, I bet he'll do it for us. That uh, has some tests that show a bunch of different muzzle brakes against each other. And uh, the Strike Industries one, I'm pretty sure won out for about just the best bang for the buck. And I have several of them and they work really, really good. I mean, and they don't break the bank either. They're not a, you know, a $200 thing. You know, it's like something that works for 30 bucks. About well, which? Oh, Sorry, I don't really have any. I'm, I'm guessing the weak link, but I like uh, what that just said about if I ever wanted one, I like uh, one that's more affordable. So on the AR, I like the uh, Surefire one. 
I don't care about if it's affordable. You can get them sometimes in a deal when they're trying to move cans where they'll have them like, you know, accessories on a special or something, but it works and it's awesome. And there's probably others that'll mimic it, but what I use. And do you like that one? Cause you can quick attach a can to it. I don't have any cans, but I guess I could. I like it because yeah, everybody I have, I know has cans that can attach to it, I guess. And then, you know, I've used it on there. I've used that brake on their guns, and I know that it works well. So it's just strong, and it works. And it's, I don't know, I imagine somebody could rip it off. It's not, you know, just a piece of metal. But uh, I like it. Super loud and uh, kind of pointless, <clears throat> except for with follow-up shots. Uh, we never talked about either that uh, brakes will also, well, Clover kind of mentioned, I think, but brakes will screw up when you're prone, like you're kicking up dust and you're getting, you know, you're definitely not hiding your position when you're shooting with a brake. Very true. Unless you're shooting on, like, pavement, maybe. Even then, you're going to kick up leaves and water and whatever. Anything that can be kicked up, you're going to be pushing it to the sides of you. All right, well, we'll let uh, Woods come up with a uh, member of the day today. And let's see if we got a gun shop in here. Oh, I guess we don't because I just put it all together right now. So I'm going to use the last gun shop that I did on Instagram, which I don't even remember what it is. So we're going to go find that together. <clears throat> so it's probably one from the tour. It is. Oh, actually, okay, this one's pretty cool. So Dead Horse knows this one. This one is called... Um, the Dan's discount guns and ammo, or just discount guns and ammo? Oh, Dan, will left because it's his shop. So uh, just the, discount guns and ammo. Yeah. But Dan owns the shop. It's called Dan's discount guns and ammo, but I guess it's just called discount guns and ammo. Anyway, I like it because number one, it was between where I was and where I was going, so it was you know convenient for me. But uh, right, they've got a uh, location that's right off the highway, sort of in a business area, I guess you'd say, like in a com commercial area. And uh, um, they've got a big sign on their roof that says gun shop or gun range. So I think that's pretty cool. And it's the highway between Salt Lake City and the airport. So lots of people see that thing. Now, obviously, Salt Lake City is a gun city and everything, but a lot of people go there to ski or to, for whatever reason, conventions and stuff. So they're going to see that shop and hopefully pull over and check it out. And you can see it's kind of a cool shop. They've got uh, grid up. So instead of just boring slat wall, I mean, I really like slat wall, but I've seen it a lot lately. So they got grid, but their grid is on the wall. Actually, it is slat wall now that I'm looking at it, but it's, uh, they've got hangers for clothes, basically, except that uh, they don't have clothes on them. They got guns. So what it does is it brings the guns out like, I don't know, eight inches or a foot from the wall. So I don't know if you can really tell from these pictures, but they're almost like hovering because they're they're on these extended little thingies that are got little hooks that are holding them all. They're just sort of suspended out there away from the wall. That's a really neat effect. It really makes you see the guns. Kind of tell from these pictures, I guess. Anyway, lots of guns. Uh, their uh, counters are full of handguns. You can see how the counters wrap all around. Lots of ammo. And I don't know, is it a cheap place? They call it discount guns and ammo. Is it an inexpensive place compared to other shops in town? No. No, I, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily any cheaper than anywhere else. It's pretty standard. But unlike places I've experienced in Salt Lake City, they got Rufus ammo all over the place. Like, there's at least three rounds in each corner of each case, so which is awesome. They wouldn't sell me any, but I thought that was pretty cool. And there's the sign that you can see from the highway right here, gun range. Pretty neat. There's only that little tiny bit of parking, so I don't know how you're supposed to park there, but... What size rounds were there? Were those in the case? Those are 50 BMG Rufus. So this is the lot, the the most amount of legal legal explosive you're allowed to own. These these are the explosive rounds. Oh, they've got, they've got uh, RDX explosive in them with a steel core and a tracer. So they're armor piercing incinerary explosive rounds. I think so they, I didn't know civilians were allowed to have explosive rounds. Yeah, you're allowed to have as much as what's in this 50 BMG roof. They usually cost about 85. That's awesome. 
Violent. Probably just my state. <clears throat> I don't know. Like I said, they're usually about 85 bucks. You can see them in the uh, case over here. If somebody sells them to you, most people, they can't sell them at a gun shop because of their armor piercing part. But uh, So they can only display them. But uh, if you, you can get them once in a while from somebody and you know, it'll cost you close to 100 bucks. And then there's a couple people that talk with them on YouTube so you can see what they do to like a steel plate or whatever they shot with them. Anyway, cool little shop, and it's got an interesting story. The guy that runs it owned some computer businesses also, so had all kinds of interesting stuff happen, and started some gun shops, and I say kind of a neat place. It's got a range, so people were in there shooting while I was there. Some guy was in there getting his AR pistol tuned up, and it seemed like a pretty cool place. Like the people, uh, you know, were having a good time and showed up because they, uh, you know, liked the staff. So uh, that's what you like to see when you go around checking out gun shops. It's called Discount Guns and Ammo, and it's between Salt Lake City and the airport, if you ever go there. I just posted this thing. <clears throat> 36. So I saw some music here and there. It also, is it also part of a pawn shop? No, no, that was a different shop that I checked out in, uh, in, uh, it's in Nevada. Um, I don't know if it'll be in here somewhere. Um, actually, I don't think it will because I couldn't get it to come up. I couldn't quite get the stupid Google thing to uh, give me the this little screen whenever I would arrive at a place. Anyway, that place was called Guitars and Guns, and it was right just inside of uh, Nevada from coming from St. George, Utah. All right, so I quit screen sharing, and that was our gun shop of the day. We try to feature a gun shop every day, and we try to feature a member over on gun channels, and that should have gave Woods enough time to come up with one. Um, I'm going to go with one somebody on the panel here, Muscle Dog uh, Mafia, because um, he's all about helping puppies. And he really did help me think about what I've been feeding my dog and the fact my dog stinks. And when I quit feeding it shit, it didn't stink anymore or less anyway. Really? And he's been, just like sweating out stink or the poops or what? Um, well, I mean, it's an older dog. So it like was barfing a lot and we had a kind of food that we had been feeding it. It was like tolerable level of stink, but like not as bad. But when I really started getting, you know, better at, you know, making sure it exercised and you know, it's a pretty old dog. It's like 14 years old. So Gas, bad breath, or the smell of its skin? Um, can I answer yes? All, all the above. Okay. And uh, I love my little dog, but, you know, it's probably, just, it's probably not, you know, going to be around forever. But also, he's been really good about being in a lot of different chats. He's a fairly new member. Like, I'm a fairly new member, and he just jumped in and got active. And I really appreciate it. And... I've learned quite a lot from him. I'm very glad that I've been helpful. Uh, you know, yeah, people, I can't stress enough how many, I mean, you, you mentioned like the body odor and the dog and stuff. What a lot of people don't realize is, is that anything that is toxic to their dogs comes out in their skin, comes out in their fur. So if you have a really smelly dog, food is normally an indicator. And one, one thing I find an, an interesting side thing of gun channels in general is there's a lot of uh, gun people, or excuse me, dog people in gun channels. And I, fi I find that an, 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 not unusual, just uh, su surprising. And gun I'm people have good taste, so of course we have dogs. Well, <laughs> I mean, don't, isn't, that, isn't that like a requirement of any decent gun shop to have a regular house dog? Well, I, I think so, but not everybody does. <clears throat> coffee table maybe a donut i won't even shop at a place that doesn't let me bring my dog in <laughs> well you know that's an interesting question because um we have a guy that's been going around a lot to lots of gun shops and i'm wondering if he has something to say on the subject of gun shops allowing dogs in or have a dog in there now i don't bring dogs into gun shops Besides, not this dog. She sheds everywhere. It'd be rude. 
So your dog is not housebroken? No. Well, well he, it's not a matter of housebreaking. She he, drops her coat, so she's dropping her coat right now. He, <laughs> she what? You ever seen like a sheep with all its hair falling off? Its wool falling off? That's what she's like. Okay, well, I had a lot of Alaskan Malamute, so I understand what you mean by by, by it. fur falling off when it's time to shed. But generally, if a dog is housebroken, they won't go inside any enclosed building. What? I'm not talking that, about That's not what he's talking about. I'm talking about she sheds all the time. I would be rude to take her in and shed hair everywhere. Oh, I gotcha. I, I, I was wondering why you were bringing up the shedding. <laughs> but uh, I've been in plenty of shops and people bring dogs in. I don't know too many. I can't think of any shops where they don't want dogs in there. Or they wouldn't let a dog come in. And I... Yeah, unless they unless they're like have a restaurant in there too or something. I don't I don't know any gun shops that have a problem if you bring your pup in. I guess that's okay. different. I'm trying yeah. to think of how many shops, like what's the ratio of shops that have a dog in the shop? And you don't always know because a lot of times it's a little fat dog with the same guy on the counter and you don't even know it's there. But dogs that come out and say hello, I mean a good... It's not quite half, but it's close to 30%, probably higher than 30% of the shops have a dog. I have always noticed that the shop, especially a dog that wants to say hello to you, usually, just in my experience, have all staffs. I've never been a dog where the staff was uh, standoffish. All right, I didn't hear all that. It was probably interesting. Something about a dog and a staff. I think he basically said when you go in and the dog is real friendly and comes up and says hi to you, it's usually a nice staff and a good gun shop. Oh, I was thinking it was something about a staff and you had a thing at the top of the staff and at a certain time of the day, the light would come through and shine to the... <laughs> is my audio that bad right now? Now it's yep. fine. Cutting out a minute. <laughs> but yes, it's not Gandalf. <laughs> It's not Gandalf. That's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Come on. Um, all right. So uh, that was our member of the day. So, yeah, right on. That's what we make on channels for us. People can hang out, bring their interests, interests, and the Second Amendment stuff unites us. Raiders of the Lost Bark. Nice. Well played. All right, so um, what's our? Do we have another topic? Anybody listen to Clover Show? Yes, I actually like it when you guys do those educational shows. So it was talking about newsletters. Does anybody subscribe to newsletters? Does anybody have any uh, input as far as what you like or don't like about newsletters? Well, I liked what you guys were talking about where like a newsletter has kind of the recap of what's been going on with somebody's channel for the last month and then maybe has a little bit added to it to give you some more insight into some of those shows. I, I do like that kind of stuff, but I hate newsletters that like I, I probably get four or five a week from like Bass Pro that I can honestly care less about. Yeah, it's tough for stores. Like for some reason they think like, we just can't wait to hear what's on sale. And I guess that comes from the newspapers. And they go, okay, every week we got to put out sale ads, right? Because there's the only way that they can get to people is through, you know, distributing pieces of paper to them. So they did it on a timely basis. And anybody who wanted to make a purchase waited till that day to figure out what the sales were. And that's how everybody met up. And then they're using that same paradigm, I guess. Um, you know, just figuring people want to hear about us. They want to hear from us. They want to hear what we have for sale. I guess it makes sense. But, uh, and I, I experienced that with, I mean, those kind of newsletters, I guess I get. I don't even open them. <clears throat> but the ones like uh, I was saying, the uh, gun owners' rights groups, you know, stuff like firearms policy. I mean, that stuff, they're... I would say they're probably a good 50% of the time. It's it's valid. They got stuff going on because there's that much stuff happening in California. 
but then they do put out stuff that has nothing to do with something that's immediate. And that's unfortunate because they have so much stuff that is immediate. If they ever want to say anything else, it's going to seem like a burden, right? So that's for, unfortunate for them. But then you get places like Second Amendment and gun owners, and they've always been notorious for just sending out tons of superfluous, what's the word, extra crap, uh, worse than NRA in some respects. And, uh, and a couple of the other organizations will send out newsletters just because it's that time of the month and they got to say something, which you got to do. But, yeah, they don't, uh, I don't know, I guess they're not trying to entertain. They're just trying to disseminate information. So uh, you got to take it as it is. Anybody yeah, else? I just, I, oh, sorry, G. I was going to say, I just give stores because they have all my shit and I haven't bought a f for 10 years. I get aggravated when they waste my mailbox time telling me about fishing equipment. Any time they want to send me an ammo sale flyer, they're, they're more than welcome to. Uh, I get uh, probably at least twice a week, sometimes more from the Firearm Policy Coalition, an email newsletter that tells me that the sky is falling and I must react immediately. And then the next one will say, no, it really, really now, this is the last chance, last, last, last chance. You gotta react now. Send $25. <laughs> and it's just, you know, how, how it, 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 it's like the cry wolf thing. It's like, yeah, I, I want to know when things are going down, but when you constantly tell me things are going down constantly, then I tend not to pay as much credence to it as maybe I should. No, that, that's a valid point, especially if they're always in the blue, kind of gets that blue, the sky is falling type of deal. Right. I find myself sometimes not opening some of that because because of just what you said, Dano, is because this guy is falling all the time, then and then that's probably on me. I should probably still read it, but then I'm like, you know, like you guys, I get like 50 emails a day. I'm not going to read every little thing. So if they could tone it back a little bit, that would certainly help. I've always tried to make mine like uh – like I was saying, Clover said, like an archive, just a table of contents of what we did for the month. And then since I've got so many different sticks in the fire, just to let everybody know who's paying attention, you know, where all those sticks are. So if they want to double check on something or see a campaign or whatever, it's available. But uh, it does seem a bit uh, bullet points. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to include some of what you guys are talking about, you know, a little bit of, I don't know what to call it, like extra couple of paragraphs about this or that because really I think there's something to getting some extra words out there and that's one of the things I was trying to on site if people can add newsletters to their projects uh, they create a bunch of words and those words can add all kinds of elements to your projects where you're not you're not going to see it until those words exist uh, those you know those emails get sent out <clears throat> and potentially forwarded one of the nice things about electronic media or referenced and you know you can like clover had the chat with the sling guy whatever that army guy was that did the slings you know i was thinking uh i do the pot the playlist of chats that i've joined but i could easily add that to the newsletter and let people know who might be paying attention to what i'm doing uh you know i was in clover's chat and then i could put a link to that that dude's site or whatever and you know, if somebody forwards that email, boom, that's another instance of that out there. Another potential, somebody that's going to click on it. Uh, but even if they just copy and paste that and then post that on a platform or a forum or something. So you're basically creating stuff that people can copy and paste and, and transfer around a lot easier than kind of putting the burden on. If they think it's so interesting from listening that they go and find it. And then once they found it, they decide to write something or copy it and put it somewhere you know you're giving them you know that much more potential for that kind of stuff to get moved around and where a lot of the people on gun channels at least are real video centric or youtube centric 
uh, you know, creating their videos, and it's been a, a real hassle, or at least an effort for Clover to get people to put descriptions in their videos, and then you know, tidying them up. But uh, you know, this is another, I guess, step towards that. You know, getting some stuff out there that's written about what we're doing our videos about. Especially these live ones. Almost nothing gets written about these live ones. I mean, that would be kind of cool. cool construction thing where you bring somebody on from the industry to tell you a topic to like put almost like a short synopsis, maybe a bear in the description. That would be pretty cool. So if there's a listener out there that wants to write up a short summary of each show and then like write those in the description of the shows over on GunStreamer and then let us know and then we'll send you a free patch. So there's 700 shows. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> it won't take that long. Chop, chop. <laughs> You're going to get a free patch out of it, though. <clears throat> so let's not forget about that. All right. So, uh, what else we got going on? Uh, we tried to hit a gun shop. We did that. We tried to hit a member of the day. We did that. Uh, I'd actually like to. Um, this was weeks ago in some other chat about this multiple times here, but I'd like to bring it up one more time, and that's that. I really wish in this in the inside the gun community, particularly, uh, I wish people weren't so afraid to promote one another. Um, I'm starting to make it a note myself to at least once a week make a video or make a post of some sort where I promote other people's content. And one of the big things about that is like what we were talking about earlier is about how everybody in here, when you opened up about talking about everybody in here is from different parts of the country and different perspectives and stuff. And I do think that particularly sometimes people worry too much about almost hoarding, like they hoard subscribers. I guess it would be the right way to say it. And I think it would be good if more people in the community would reach out and promote one another. Uh, I mean, a good example of that is, you know, I still, as far as I know, I'm the only channel that's promoted the uh, Yankee Marshall's uh, pistol project. Nobody else has bothered to go out and help promote that yet, or even alluded to it. And it'd be something, I mean, that's a, it, there's nothing more pro two way than, what he's currently doing right there. He's getting more people to embrace their second amendment rights. And yet we're having trouble getting, you know, traction even to get that to happen. There's a couple different ways off just off the top of my head. And there's probably more than that of why that might be happening. One is, you know, either as a group, we just don't generally tend to s support each other. That's a possibility. I'm not saying that's what it is, but that's a possibility. Another one is, is the person who's carrying the, the torch, you know, for this particular program may not necessarily be the best representative to be carrying the torch. That's just a possibility, not necessarily the case. I was just using um, him as one example, though, Dana. There's lots right. of people out there who could use help. Right, and and, and 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 I'm saying the same thing. Is what I'm saying can be applied to any situation, any channel. Here's a little sneak preview for everybody that's watching tonight. Have mm -hmm. I shown the show before? Patches. Ours are all robot made. We don't use any slaves. At least not on this patch, I guess. Um, so as far as I think what Dan was saying is because of Yankee, I guess, yeah, maybe Yankee. I don't know. <clears throat> as an example, if, if I'm holding, uh, my, if, if my channel were all about gun rights in the second amendment, that doesn't necessarily mean that me just Dano is the best representative and the most articulate to help hold up that torch and that light for that right. I could be for it, but that necessarily make me the best representative. Yeah, I mean, but it's also Yankee just doing something. It's not like he's trying to say this is the way everything should be and this is a test run and once we figure it out, this is the way things will be, period. He's just doing his thing. So, 
I hear you, but he's also just basically moving some money around. He's letting a bunch of people throw money at him, and then he's going out and getting guns that uh, you know he sends out. So I don't know. I mean, I guess one way to look at it is we're not supporting each other. On the other hand, I think there's a heck of a lot of collaboration going on and a lot of support going on. So, I mean, I don't want to look at it that no one's helping each other. There's certainly groups of people that, I don't know, like any other thing, you know, there's Ford people and there's Chevy people. Do they always help each other out? I mean, they probably do when it's super important or something. Or when there's legal things affecting both of them. But, uh, you know, when their just interests aren't 100% aligned, they don't necessarily, they don't have resources to help everybody for everything. But on the other hand, I think there's a lot of collaborations and stuff and uh, shows that part put into their own uh, format or their own schedule to promote other people's things or have people on the panel that are from other projects. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I and saying, and saying the, sorry, Daniel, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think of how difficult it is for all of us non-Californians to get uh, riled up every time California gets attacked, which we should, but we're not very good about it collectively. I mean, and the state of California and their gun rights is a much bigger issue than the micro rights or issue of, uh, it's it's another angle at it that, that, than that a particular case. We, we don't feel do well on macro issues either. C completely agree, Dan spoke a little too broadly when I said that apply that or helps promote anybody or anything like that. I just wish that we saw more of it. Um, and again, it doesn't mean that we have to, God knows I don't agree with Yankee, but it doesn't mean that we have to necessarily agree with everything that somebody else does, but it's, I mean, it's no different than get coming on here and, you know, you guys reach out and we're at the day, somebody else out there. And it's a good thing that I wish more people would embrace. As a lot of us, not everybody, but a lot of us complain when else don't get involved. It's critical because a lot of us in that bigger channels don't get involved, don't get involved themselves. So I guess I just uh, lead by example for what they want. You're breaking up a lot there, but I think we get the idea that uh, what you're saying as far as that collaboration, but it, I don't know, we are, we're not all going to walk in lockstep and nobody would want to necessarily um, have to stick with some flavor where everybody was always aware of everything everybody was doing. Part of what makes us unique and in individuals is that we're not all paying attention to everybody. So we're all out doing our own different versions of whatever we're interested in and following our own pursuits and all that kind of thing. So uh, I, I don't know. He gets upset sometimes when the bigger channels, I guess, don't talk about his project. But I don't know. How often does he talk about their projects? I don't even know what their projects are half the damn time. Um, so. I don't know. That's that's what it is. I was going to say, though, if you look at, again, some other area of interest, fishermen, you know, how often do freshwater fishermen give a damn about saltwater fishermen or fly fishermen, okay, except for every once in a while when it comes up about, you know, again, legal stuff or something like that, or some kind of industry issue, liability or something that might apply to everybody. Um, most people in similar realms but in different areas of interest don't always necessarily work together now, i definitely agree with you that it's frustrating since we have you know definite enemies that are out there to you know affect things in the culture and the legal system that are going to affect all of us that we should be able to work together better but that's one of the reasons we build gun channels one of the reasons we do kind of efforts we do um, I've discovered uh, just recently with the Gun Rights Policy Conference and going to that two-way summit before it, you know, that there's a lot of people out there that I didn't know are putting forth lots of effort over a longer time than me even, and, uh, you know, at different levels of success. And, um, you know, none of us are aware of everything that's going on out there. So I'm going to just say, you know, I don't know if I'm even playing devil's advocate, but just 
put out there that you know even if you're talking i think about youtube people but if we bring it out from youtube how often do we talk about a blog or a new author or uh um a photographer who's out there doing something how about this time magazine cover has anybody seen the time magazine thing hit an instagram today no oh really nobody seen that no i didn't no i haven't when i was in town what's up Go we'll grab it. So here's my Yankee video that's a month old, talking about his Yankee Pistol project. So other people did it. I think Clover did one. Um, where am I gonna find it? Well, I know where I'll find it on my own. Can I get to my own live stuff on here? I can't look at that. You know this guy, Dano? You ever heard of this guy? I I can't quite see. It's gun? Does it say Guns in America? Is that what it says? Dang it. How do I get to, I want to let me click on the little thingy. What's the whole point of this if it won't let me click on this thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, no other choice. Tim, yeah. Uh, Kevin Dixie. Yeah. So no other choice. I'll just go straight to his thing. Out of St. Louis. So Kevin had mentioned at the Gun Rights Policy Conference to a thing like, hey, give us your platforms. So I try to promote his stuff when I can. And this is... <clears throat> This is a Time Magazine thing that's hitting the cover soon. I don't know when, but soon, and everybody's been posting it. So this is a living billboard, they're calling it. Are you, can you, are you seeing my screen? Yep. So it's sort of an animated giant photograph type of thing with all these different people. So Time Magazine paid some photographer, I don't know, I forgot, I saw somewhere the, the stats on it, like a lot of money. They, they, they brought a photographer to three different cities, I think it was Philadelphia, D.C., and St. Louis. I don't know, maybe it was Detroit, D.C., and St. Louis. Got all these people, did individual photographs with them, and then turned it into this big thing. So on this little video clip, we're only seeing the gun side of it like the anti-gun side is over to the left i guess you see it a little bit at the beginning there and then it goes to the middle and then the gun side you can see how the people are like shooting over here and then when it goes back there's maj from black guns matter there's kevin right there in this dead center kevin no other choice right there oh, yeah. so uh it's kind of neat so um there's that <clears throat> that's what it looks like I guess, you know, if you just looked at it as a giant still image, but it's still, it goes way larger than this. It's just that Instagram isn't able to, uh, to do it good. So anyway, it's, I forget how many people they interviewed, 250 or something like that. Uh, different people with different things and they're trying to offer a conversation that everybody says they want, right? So bunch of different people were involved and right now all these different people on Instagram that I follow or that are in it are, uh, you know, I guess got their pictures today or something. Well, I might have to buy a copy of Time Magazine. So anyway, I guess what I was saying is uh, how often do we talk about just the people in here like this, like Kevin? You know, I didn't even know about Kevin until just a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> and uh, Maj, I've known about his Black Gun Matter thing, but I haven't really been paying attention to it until I heard about it on some podcasts, heard interviews with him. Uh, this girl here that they highlighted in one of these pictures is a uh, competitive shooter, and I don't pay any attention to competitive shooting stuff that's happening out there. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that we're not paying attention to that <clears throat> this girl here, that uh, some of the other aspects of our industry or our culture, whatever we want to call it, gun owners, uh, might be super interested in, like hunting. I don't pay that much it's, attention to hunting issues. It kind of shoots to the point or the heart of what I was trying to express is that, like, I would have never found uh, you guys. I would have never found gun channels if it wasn't for a shout out in somebody else's video about you guys. You know, it, it's not that people need to make like big prolonged videos, you know, just promoting other people, but just mentioning them. Hey, I saw, you know, at the end of their video, just, hey, I saw, you know, this interesting thing over at so-and-so's. Maybe I've never heard of so-and-so, 
but it's nice to know that maybe I'll be interested in going and looking at it. And I no, think that's how very valuable. I agree with you 100% because really the you know what we're trying to do is encourage people to turn on their telephones and use them as cameras and participate in the whole thing. And that's what it's all about is figuring out and people getting um accustomed and comfortable with you know discovering new people new people and and finding their channels and checking them out. Somebody like Dead Horse, you know, he's not sitting there every day making a video. He's not trying to become the next AR-15 expert out there. He's not uh, chiming in on every single conversation that happens on the internet anywhere. You know, with like, you know, here's my two cents on that because you talked about ARs. Oh, I own that thing, so let me give you some opinions on it. But if you were interested in figuring out something, you know, he's got a ton of information already up there. And if you were able to bend his ear um, and ask him a specific question, you know, that'd be super valuable. And that's where I think, like you're saying, you know, just people make, making others aware of the projects that are out there. That's what it's all about. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, that's just part of it. You know, we were talking about the newsletter or whatever, devoting a chunk of your newsletter. Here's three channels that I think are cool. <clears throat> Kev, uh, Clover, I don't know if he's asleep or if he's still in here. He just did a good video. Yeah, I'm still here. That video you did with your Patreons, that was pretty classy. You know, just acknowledging and let recognize. Oh, just a monthly thing? Yeah, I don't, I don't do that every month. I mean, it just kind of depends on if I'm thinking about it and I have time to throw it together. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's they, they deserve my, my time when I have it to do something like that. Absolutely. Was that um, NLC Firearms post? Was that come out today or was that yesterday? Today, I think earlier today. Everybody's came out today, so they must. Time Magazine must have sent out their pictures today, or told them like today's the day you can go live with them or whatever. I don't know. I'm just trying to find it on my Instagram. I'm subscribed well, to him. There's an account for Kevin, and then there's an account for No Other Choice, and they're pretty similar. But he does a little bit more funny stuff on his Kevin one, I guess. The Kevin Dixie one, his personal one, yeah. Yeah, Kevin, Vanessa Kitty saying, I watched Kevin on a number of shows. I've enjoyed his message and work. It's what's truly needed out there. We must talk with many people across the political spectrum um, and show why the Second Amendment is a right. And, uh, yeah, he's got actually, do I'm still screen sharing him? So I'll just click on it. He's got this one from, I think, this weekend. And I can't understand half the shit he types in here because he's got his weird, like, way of typing or whatever. <clears throat> I don't know if he's using words or if he's using shorthand or what the fuck. Who says you can have a who says you can have a good combo with some boys to men and IHOP pancakes? I will go wherever the people are. I will share knowledge and carbs with you if that's what it takes. Only a two minute video link in bio. Subscribe. Well it's not a two minute video, it's only a one minute video because it's on Instagram. But I think this was something that was people asked him to speak. I don't think he just walked into this IHOP. That's just going out and, like he says, eating pancakes with some kids or whatever. But, shit, I can't go down there and just start preaching to a bunch of kids at a IHOP. Look at me funny, right? So, Right. Basically. As much as I'm very uh, um, very supportive of his community efforts, I am not 
anywhere close to as articulate as he is. So he's the one to do a much better job to carry the torch on that issue than necessarily just Dano, who's not as articulate as he is. Well, and then he's authentic. He's talking to kids from St. Louis or wherever, and he's from St. Louis, right? Uh, yes. So he knows their areas or whatever, or their fucking whatever neighborhoods and shit. But we were talking about, um, you know, people, you know, to, to, who, to represent an issue. No, 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 no. That's where, that's where I think me and you are having a disconnect, Dano. It's not about representing an issue. My point is, is that we should be willing to share good things that we see because it helps spread those things around and makes them more common. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not saying that you're going to hold somebody up as the ultimate, you know, this is the person. I'm saying that when someone does something good, it's a good idea in our community for us to share that. Because we all don't know everybody. We all know different people. And it's by us just taking that extra 10 seconds after we've done whatever we're done, Instagram photo or whatever, being like, hey, by the way, I saw this and I think this was good. You know, it, it helps spread those messages. All right. Well, I guess what? We're not cutting the show off since we're farting around. I'm going to keep going. And I was, since we're being controversial, I'm going to be controversial. So I was watching Gunstreamer and latest videos. <coughs> I think that's where I've seen it. And yeah, March for Our Lives is a hoax, right? Uh, and this is American Gun Chick. So I clicked on this. It's American Gun Chick and it's Gun Day Monday. So I was watching this one and she went to a... March for Our Lives thing and went up and asked her a question. Her question's kind of weird, but their answer was even weirder. And then uh, she did an interesting job of like mixing in some stuff to try to make it like a, I don't know, like a you know, presentation about this coverage of this event. You know, like say she brings in some news stories and stuff that talk about, I guess, her position on uh this yeah, one. they they more or less. There was a guy there who um, was involved in this situation. Yeah, he, he was the dad of a kid that was shot in a that guy. bad, I guess, a bad standard ground case, right? Because technically, yeah. if if it doesn't apply, it's not a standard ground case. But exactly, uh, that's exactly that's what, what that was the defense anyway that didn't hold up. Anyway, yeah, the the uh, the kid's dad was there on the panel, so that's where she brought that up. That you know. It's it, and she does make the point that you know, stand your ground. There's no such thing as I don't know. I don't even know how to say it. But you, you understand, no, no, you understand get what I'm getting. My at. life was in danger, and now everything's okay. Like yeah, it's not stand your ground. There's no such thing as a bad stand your ground. It's either stand your ground. It's either or legitimate murder. or it's not. Right. Or yeah. murder. Right. Exactly. Right. There's no like get out of jail free with stand your ground, which is what this guy basically his position was. So I think it was interesting because she goes to this event, she asks the question, she gets a response, but she gets a response from like one kid, another kid, and then this guy who's the adult there. And then instead of just saying like, here's the three responses, she chopped them up and then she gave some, some background. So this whole little section here was, actually it's not a little section, it's a whole big section about how this, this was the one that you might remember from Florida where the kids were playing loud music and the guy shoots them. He shoots kids for loud music. And originally it was, oh, this guy got away from Stand Your Ground. Well, it's poor reporting and it's intentionally poor reporting, I think. So mm -hmm. she goes into and she explains in here that the way that the police work is, you know, their job is to come in and evaluate a situation and then take it to the district attorney. And then they are done and they go on and do whatever other job they're supposed to do. So then the district attorney decides what they're going to do with it. And, and it was the initial police gave it to the district attorney and said, there's nothing we can do. It falls within this parameter. So here you go. District attorney got it and said, oh, hell no, it doesn't. This guy's going to jail. There's the guy who murdered the kid. So what the media will do is say, this was taken care of by the police and it was justified as stand your ground. And of course, these people hear it on the news and they go, oh, that's the way it ended. 
Well, that's not the way it ended. That's just the way the news stopped reporting it. And then they re neglected, intentionally decided not to report on the conclusion of the same case, which is the guy was then immediately charged with murder because he was not justified with stand your ground by just shooting kids in a parking lot. So and I think that directly relates to we have low information readers in general. They mm -hmm. read a headline and they go directly off of that. Yeah, I guess we have a lot of stuff going on in our lives. So yeah, at some point we draw lines and we decide, okay, we've got this from a relevant, we've made poor decisions on where we get our information because these people are all basing their information off of a portion of the story. And I would have also, because I didn't know anything more about it until I read or watched her video. So it was interesting though. So like I say, she, she goes up there, she asks a question, which honestly isn't a good question. She was sort of like, blah, blah, blah. And you know, what are they supposed to say? She asked a bad question. So they answered it poorly, but then she goes on to like, instead of just taking their answers and saying, ha, you know, there you go, or leaving it, she split them up. And then she addressed each one and she gave you this like background on this one specifically because this guy's about to say stand your ground is a horrible thing and it's used as justification for murder and then you find out that his kid is actually killed by a guy and originally it was stand your ground but then it was immediately not stand your ground and then she goes over and talks to the guy i'm losing my spot in here she goes over and she talks to the guy afterwards which, you know, I'd never even can consider doing something like that. So I'm giving her credit for all that. Uh, so, so I don't know what she's doing. She's got this video and it's pretty well produced, I guess, as far as my production value, for sure. It's much better. Uh, but here's the thing. I'm watching it on Gunstreamer where I prefer to watch my videos, right? Except you got to watch her part two over on stupid YouTube. So I had to go over to YouTube and watch part two. But I was intrigued by it. So I went over and watched part two. I was also intrigued by this one, Who Owns Utah Gun Exchange? Has anybody watched this one? This no. is not by her. This is by the people from Utah Gun Exchange. I'm not aware of it. Yeah, it's in, I didn't know about it until I watched this video. So the conclusion, though, is when I watch the, the end of her video over on YouTube, uh, she goes to a pro-gun thing. And the pro-gun thing has uh, Hickok, She's up here on a vehicle signing their truck for huge tube, right? Has anybody seen this video? No. Nope. Like this. So she's up here. This is the dude who was like, we are the majority, right? I forget his name, but he's like a sheriff or something. Anyway, he does a speech in a minute here. I don't know. I guess my internet's really clunky. So she's up here doing her signature on the Jeep, right? And this is why I fast forward or I rewinded to this. And then here's Hickok commenting on her butt. Hey, look at her butt. And then they're like, what? And he's like, I'm going to go get my little shorts and I'm going to sign the Jeep too. And you get a picture of it. And then you get a little snippet. I don't like her. I don't dislike her. Right? I, it looks like so they're putting in effort, but we're going to take a minute here and get copyright strike. We can't get copyright strike. It's on YouTube. So I don't know. We'll either, we'll either get copyright strike or not. Just good people. It's just that simple. And, uh, I... So, have you guys seen this speech of this guy? I've not seen his speech. Like, you know, You're not going to get the whole know, speech. So, I, I can't get to the exact second here because of the queuing over here. But basically, he says, when I get comments from my my viewers on Facebook or on YouTube, they're just good people. And that's what he just said right now. Oops. So we're not going to hear the whole thing, but we'll hear a portion of it here that I think she edited it. Oh, am I still connected? Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Yep. Hear you. you can hear me. Can you hear this thing? It just in the Oops. background. I can't understand him. Oh, I can't even hear him at all. So something's happening weird. So now he it's ended, it's right? It's he ended, right? I, I heard her say gun day Monday thing. Okay. His little speech here is like just moments. So whenever I get to it. I mean, just good people. It's just that simple. And uh, I, I still stand by that. I mean, there are a few goofballs and dumb skulls out there, of course, because firearms are so mainstream now. And it's great. So everywhere on the internet and everywhere in real life, you got people 
that seems like a massive edit to me, right? So he sounds like he's about to go off and say, like, there's a bunch of yahoos, and it's so mainstream, so maybe somebody shouldn't have. I don't know what he says, but then they edit it out. Who have sense, and, you know, people well, like me who don't have a lot of sense, so that's just part of it. Let me get back to my notes, and here I'll go. So he seems like he was reared and rambling. I'd be curious to see what that was all about. Anyway, it was interesting, again, to see a glimpse of what that uh, speech was all about. And, man, you can't even fast forward because of their volume is right in the way. It has a little bit with her. She's the girl from some school who wore a rifle at school. There's this guy. And then the part I'm leading up to, well, I thought it was in this video. Maybe it was in the last video but because uh, I was jumping around the last video. But what's interesting is she references the shoot in the shoot, the murder in Florida again, I think it was. But this time it was the guy at the gas station who was yelling at the lady in the handicap spot. And then her husband comes out from inside. And then the guy, the husband pushes the guy who's yelling at the wife. He falls over and then he shoots the husband. And then the husband goes inside and dies. And then that was justified as stand your ground. Does everybody know the conclusion of that one? Nope. I remember the case, but I don't remember how it ended up concluding. Dead horse? Woods? Oh. I remember. The last I heard is that they were charging that man. Okay. Yeah, I think Dead Horse told me that, actually. <laughs> yeah, this guy's uh, charged. He's He committed murder. So that's, again, one of those cases where the media is going to leave it with the guy was justifiable homicide. There's white guys shooting black guys, and they're getting away with it because of Stand your ground. Boom. Change and I, I think when we talked about that, most of us came to that conclusion yeah. that we thought that he was going to be charged, and it ended up being that way. Yeah, seriously. I think that's how it came out. We were all like, unless there's something crazy going on here, unless there's some like really surprising words being exchanged, there just didn't seem like you know that guy who fell over had enough justification to kill a guy. So... Yes. Uh, I'm glad to see that those came through. And I wouldn't have known about it, except I happened to be looking at Gun Chick's video over here and then followed it over. I think it's in this one that she talks about that, but um, kind of neat. So uh, I don't know. Does anybody if I know that uh, Ghost doesn't isn't appreciating her deal, but uh, I don't know. She certainly seems like she's either efforting towards doing something over here. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff there, too. Like, you know, stuff that goes on in the background that doesn't necessarily come across in the videos and stuff. Yeah. So, and I think, you know how that is. I mean, you're privy to, to inside information and stuff like that. So, I think that's where when we talk about a lot of the rifts that happen, you know, um, that's that's where more or less it's taking place. It's like all behind the scenes drama and stuff. Yeah, and that's, well, I guess that kind of touches to what uh, Dog was saying earlier. You know, again, we're never all going to work together. And I don't think we would be better off if we were all working together. Instead, we just need to learn how to <clears throat> uh, deal with working together when necessary. You know, and that's the main thing. You know, I'm not going to acknowledge some people because I just happen to know they're jerks. You know, that I wouldn't want to acknowledge them at all period. But then, you know, if something was happening and we needed all hands on deck, then yeah, we're all shooting in the same direction. All right. Yep. Anyway, so then it is interesting if you go over and you watch uh, her part one there on Gunstreamer, it'll take you to, in her description, to a video on YouTube that is called, Who is March for Our Lives? And it starts out with the guy from YouTube making a phone call, trying to figure out who is in charge of March for Our Lives. And then there's a whole bunch of, like, trying to make it look like a documentary, like five minutes. And then at the end, the spoiler is they basically talk to a lawyer who says, we're not going to tell you who March for Our Lives is. We're only going to tell you that we want action on our letter. And we're not going to fall for your agenda or something like we're not going to fall into your agenda and 
talk about this so you can address our letter or you know we can take it to the next level so basically it turns into like a phone call where the lawyer for whoever is in whoever is March for our lives you know hired a lawyer and and the guy from gun from YouTube uh, talks to that guy on the lawyer from the phone for a minute so that's by itself though that's interesting like March for our lives you know the whole thing that's paying for that bus and for all the people and the support for those kids and those displays and banners and tables and waters and lunches and gas and everything else you know no one knows who actually is paying for all that but it's neat the youtube is out there trying to help. it'd be better if like a george stossel or somebody with some influence and some clout you know we'd get some results is that his name? Stossel? The yeah, John, okay. John Stossel. Yeah, John Stossel. And he's specific. He's um he's pretty much all YouTube, like all online now, by the way. Oh, really? Well, Great channel. Great channel. He's still putting stuff out. Yeah. I've always liked his stuff on, what was it? Uh, was it on 60 Minutes? Six, 60 Minutes, I want to say. Yeah, I've, I've liked him for years. I've, I've liked his stuff. And so I follow, yeah, I follow along on, on YouTube. He's he puts out stuff probably once a week. I'll agree. I'll totally agree. I follow him pretty closely, and I like how um, he'll find out the answer even if we all don't like the answer. Right. right. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, Marco San Stossel was 2020. Okay. Well, maybe. All right. Well, with that, uh, again, we kind of ran over, but kind of had fun with it. And I figured out how to upload more than two hours to my podcast. So I did upload all of our podcasts <clears throat> are over on iTunes now. And they're all fancy with their numbers and their screen captures and everything. So, uh, you know, spent a day doing that, basically. And uh, we're like I say, we're all numbered up. <clears throat> so this was episode 674 uh, going forward. I'm going to attempt to slice up some time and go to that um, format of doing a 20-minute show at noon and then following up with this discussion show at midnight for anybody that wants to stay awake. And uh, that way, you know, some of the core stuff will be presented in like a 20-minute format for the podcast. And then this follow-up will be, you know, maybe a podcast, maybe not, but it'll be up to people who want to, you know, either eat a... 20 minute podcast or dig into a two hour podcast. But anyway, I also figured out how to upload more than an hour. So that means I don't have to stick to an hour anymore. So thank the people who joined the panel tonight. Clover, again, thanks for sticking up or stick, yeah, joining in. Gotcha. <laughs> staying up late because you just got done with another one. I'm getting tired too. Uh, Dead Horse, I know you've been burning the candle at both ends. The room's looking pretty good. You're still there. Thanks for jumping in. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having me. He's hanging He's on hanging for the boat. <laughs> um, Vanessa says, doesn't look like I'm sleeping tonight. I don't know. Maybe she's got to get up early. Um, that might sound like wood also. No, yeah. Thanks for the fault. Of fun. And then uh, Dog. Thanks for having me. Yep. Thanks for jumping in and uh, being the member of the day. And Dano. Thanks for jumping in. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. So with that, we will uh, end it and talk to everybody. Waits to us Thursday. So today we'll talk tomorrow, everybody tomorrow. I figure out where my button.